Welcome to Van Lathan's The Red Pill, where we give you the brutal reality of truth. Today's episode, Nia Riley. Nia Riley, you guys might know, for a lot of different reasons. Um, she is a cast member of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. She is the daughter of ridiculously accomplished music legend Teddy Riley. And for you little pups out there, Teddy Riley is bigger than an icon. He's bigger than a legend. He is one of the few um, music producers that establishes a new sound and changed the face of music. You can only point to a couple of guys over the course um, of music history that have done that, and Teddy Riley is one of them. Everyone started sounding like him. He had a huge, huge impact on music. She is his daughter. Tell some stories about him. She also very famously has been in a relationship off and on with Soldier Boy for the last 10 years. And that brings us to sort of what was discussed on this particular podcast. Nia Riley is about to go deep into um, her relationship with Soldier Boy and make several different allegations of physical, emotional, and mental abuse um, at the hands of Soldier Boy. Now, very important to say, Soldier Boy was not present during this uh, this podcast, obviously, I have not spoken to Soldier Boy. This is Nia Riley's side of their relationship. These are her thoughts and her experiences, what she is saying happened between her and this man. Uh, the Red Pill Podcast is not a court of law. The Red Pill Podcast is not in any way um, the judge, jury, or executioner of any one person. The Red Pill Podcast is that. It's a podcast. It's where I sit down to people and they share with me their experiences. Um, I don't know Soldier Boy. I have not spoken with Soldier Boy. Um, I do not talk to Soldier Boy. It is up to anyone listening to this podcast to decide whether or not uh, their opinion of him changes based on, on this, uh, whether or not they are... Um, they feel any sort of connection to the story that Nia is telling um, and basically to choose their own adventure in terms of what they believe was the nature of her and soldiers relationship. Now uh, there is a clip that's going around right now um, of Nia and soldier boy on uh, the show that they were on together marriage boot camp, where in this clip, it seems as if he attacked her and on the hills of that Nia said that decided to sit down and talk a little bit more with me about why that wasn't super shocking to her. She alleges that it's not the first time that they've been in a situation like that. And she's very bravely, and to be honest with you, um, uh, very adamantly telling her story right here. Now, these are not things that she hasn't alluded to or said before, but I don't think she's gone as deep into them as she did with me. Once again, this is not a very one specific person thing. This is one person's story. If Soldier Boy or anybody else in his life would like to come up here and discuss uh, their side of this thing, I have no problem with that. Nia is someone who I know, and she asked to come in and speak. And so this platform is one that I gave her. Um, but we don't just always all throughout the entire podcast, talk about stuff like that. We talk about fun stuff as well. We had to give her a say. It was it was a very, very interesting uh, and fun talk. We talk about some things that I want to know. We get Teddy Riley, man. Teddy Riley hit us up on the podcast too. Teddy Riley called in and I got to ask him a question. I wanted to know where the girl playing the saxophone in the Rump Shaker video was. And he actually knew. And you will never guess where she is today. I did not know she didn't came up. Good for her, man. Uh, but it was a it was a very raw podcast, a very emotional podcast, a very powerful podcast. Um, and this will always be a forum uh, where people who are victims can come and talk. Always, always. That doesn't mean an indictment of anyone. That doesn't mean any sort of a uh, that you have to leave this feeling in a certain way. It's a pl it's a it's a platform. And it's a forum uh, for people. So, you know, make up your own minds. Uh, but Nia didn't pull any punches in discussing uh, any aspects of her life, and, her life, and it was a lot of fun. Okay, now, speaking of victims having their, their moment, 
Okay. And speaking of allegations, I watched in full both parts of the Michael Jackson leaving Neverland documentary and the Oprah wrap up with James Safechuck and Wade Robson. Okay. First of all, Michael Jackson's influence on the culture that I am a part of, it's very difficult to put into words. And I know that's a silly thing to say, but it's hard to explain to some people just how much Michael Jackson meant to my life. I've never met Michael. I've never met any member of the Jackson family. I don't have any of their numbers in my phone. I don't know any of their reps. I don't know anyone really even close to them. And if I do, it's fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh down the line. But since I was a kid, really before I could formulate thoughts, I was told the baddest man in the world singing and dancing was Michael Jackson, that he was touched by God with a singular talent that couldn't even be quantified. There's a way that Michael just would make you feel when he would dance and sing. And no one has really approached that since him. No one has gotten close to the excitement and the um, just the level of, of life that Michael would give when you would see him dance and up there and do his thing. It was something different. It was something almost, I don't know, supernatural about the talents that he had and the gifts that he had. And if there's one thing that we agreed on, it was that. And because of this, we looked past a lot of sort of eccentricities that Michael had or maybe trauma that he was going through um, and other things that he would do that we probably would have not looked past uh, with other performers. Watching the documentary was incredibly challenging. It was something that I had to do, but it was very, very hard because when you're listening to victims tell their stories, you never want to cast aspersion on them. You want to listen uh, with open ears and you want to hear people go through these things and, 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 and tell them fully and you want to embrace them. This was the first time I've ever heard something that I did not want to believe and still do not want to believe. I want these things about Michael Jackson to be untrue. That is, the, that is the fact. The fact is, I don't want to believe that these are real. Because of that, any cracks in the story is what I was looking for. Any inconsistencies, the fact that the boys had both, or the men now, had both perjured themselves in the past, the fact that the FBI had uh, looked into Michael Jackson for so long and not been able to pin anything on him, the fact that he was acquitted in a court of law, all of these things are things that I would hold on to in order to maintain the gray area needed to still love Michael, to still love this music, to still hold on to a part of my childhood that was very, very important. Um, I said before the documentary came out and the Oprah interview that I wasn't sure, no matter what was revealed in a documentary, if I could disassociate from my love of that particular piece of my cultural history. And I would be lying if I told you after it was over that I went and deleted all of his music out of my phone. I didn't do that. Um, on this very podcast, I was very, very hard on R. Kelly. And a lot of people are going to say, you're a hypocrite and you're not being consistent. And those people have a point. What I would say is R. Kelly was seemingly actively victimizing people and that stopping him at this point would seem like, for me at least, that we were sparing potential future victims to whatever that he would be doing because he was still the same guy, it seems like. Michael Jackson has passed away almost 10 years ago. I think it will be 10 years 
uh, this coming summer. And the question that I want to know now is that if we believe everything that was put forth in this documentary, if we take everything um, at Safe Chuck and Robeson's word, uh, what now? What are we being asked to do? The gentlemen in the um, in the documentary themselves still have mixed feelings towards Michael Jackson. There's still an affinity that they feel for him, um, and they were very very forthright about that. And for me, I want to know what besides supporting victims, what besides hearing them out are we supposed to do? That's the one thing that I don't think that uh, was ever gotten to the bottom of. And it's an important question to ask because there are going to be people on both sides saying that this was uh, all fact. There are going to be people on the other side saying that it's all lies. If you watch the documentary, you can make up your own mind whether or not you believe it or not. But the question is, was there any, is there any call to action as far as how we are supposed to approach the legacy of Michael Jackson, how we're supposed to view Michael Jackson? What are we supposed to do with this information now? That's not me making an excuse. I've already admitted that in this particular instance, in this particular issue, there's a possibility that I'm lacking, that I don't have an answer for why I didn't immediately become disgusted and put off. Like, I did it. I tried. I, after the documentary was over, I played rock with you. Still wanted to get up. Still wanted to get up. Still felt joy. I, I, I watched some old dancing machine videos. Still was like, inside. it's still the, the that same thing that I described earlier. It was still there. Whereas... Whenever I hear R. Kelly's voice, whenever I hear, see his face, automatically, I think abuser of young black women don't want to have anything to do with it. Um, I don't know what the difference in me is, but I just have to be honest with you guys that I'm not being able to jive it. I'm not being able to, I haven't been able to kind of, to, to kind of face it in this situation. There's something different here. And I don't really know what it is. Um, as far as Way Robson and 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 uh, James Safe shall go, listen, Oprah did something where she had a room full of survivors, uh, a room full of people who uh, who are victims of, of child sex abuse. And she opened the floor to them and they all had a discussion, a very open discussion about what that means for them now, what that means going forward in their lives, and what that means for them in the past with their relationship with their parents and their development. And these are conversations that we continuously have to have. We continuously need to have these conversations and really show people that are victims of this uh, that they have safe spaces to talk and uh, that there are people that are going to listen. Um, I am not a victim of that. That has not been my my experience. So I don't know really what it does to your life. And I know that any music or fandom that you have for one particular artist is not worth ruining an entire human life. It's not. But this is a situation to where there needs to be some understanding of how we move forward if, in fact, you believe this. Are there reasons not to believe it? Sure. There are. If you want to poke holes in it, there are ways that you can't, without a doubt. Are there reasons to believe it? Absolutely. If you watch the documentary, there are absolutely reasons to believe it. But I guess the overall question is you've seen both parts, you've seen the Oprah interview, you've heard the stories. As a culture, now what? 
I think Duvall actually put that up. And it's a great question. Now what? All right. Heavy stuff. I promise the entire podcast won't be that heavy. Um, But it is a little heavy. So uh, for anyone that's ever been the victim of abuse or been uh, close to someone that is the victim of abuse, I am uh, cautioning you to the fact that some of this podcast might be a little hard to listen to. But Nia had to have her say. Pop some pills. Let's get to it. Do you have the veneers? Do you have them too? Not the veneers. You have the veneers? I have some. Let me see. <laughs> I oh my you. God. These my veneers. My look man. amazing. I didn't say they didn't look amazing. <laughs> Let's be I'm clear. just saying that, like, uh, uh, they look, they look, they do look really good. I'm saying that, like, hey, first of all, white people in the room, <laughs> clap for Nia Riley right here. Thanks. We are amongst a legend here. I'm a legend? Yeah. My dad is a legend, not me. No, you have your own legendary <laughs> shit as well. You think so? okay. Yeah, but yeah, your dad definitely is a legend. Um, but the v- thing about the veneers is this: <sighs> you're annoying. Is that so many of y'all have the veneers? I'm starting to y'all, feel like what y'all is that? Are just like y'all black pop- people popping black people in the industry. Y'all have veneers. It's starting to look like y'all all in the same family. Like y'all got like, like a the, perfect teeth family. <laughs> you can curse if you want. Like you, like you. When did you get them? Uh, a few months ago. Okay. Well, how was your teeth before? Fucked up? No. Just, they look good. They so why did you get the veneers if you had good teeth? Um, because I felt like I had like I don't know the length in them. You're prosperous. So what? You got the Rolex. You got the veneers. What else do you have? What does Nia Riley have in her life? That's like what are the luxuries that you own? Like shit on these hoes real quick. My daughter. Oh, see, look at you. Turn that around. Your daughter. Yes. So, Nia. That's me. Let's talk about your life. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. But before we get to, obviously, the things that people are going to want to know about, mm-hmm. let's talk about you, because you are on you were on Love & Hip Hop, right? Yeah. You I are was. on Love & Hip Hop, or you were? I was. This was the first season I didn't do. How, long, how many years were you on Love & Hip Hop? Four. I think I did four, four seasons. Four seasons of Love & Hip Hop. Oh, yep, the first four. I didn't do the fifth one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What made you want to be on Love & Hip Hop? Um, I don't know. They brought it to us. I was in a relationship at the time, so mm-hmm. I didn't really see anything wrong with it. I didn't think like it would go bad. Right. I like. Did that, it go bad? I think it went bad. Why? Listen, I don't. I've never watched Love and Hip. I love uh, that's bullshit. I right. I'm like, don't fucking lie. I've like, 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 watched Love and Hip Hop before, but I haven't because you were on Hollywood, right? Yeah, I was on Hollywood. So I haven't seen that one before. Why do you feel like your time on Love and Hip Hop went bad? I mean, the time like the first, I think two two seasons maybe mm-hmm. I was in a relationship on Love and Hip Hop. In a relationship, the first three. With I don't remember Boy. exactly. Yes. Anyway, mm-hmm. but yes, I don't mm-hmm. think it. It didn't portray my relationship in a good way, but I don't really think it does with anybody's. It just, mm. I don't know. Do you think, think that bad. that's by design, or you just think that when you have cameras in front of somebody's face, it's hard to get the true? I think both. Okay. Both. So, yeah. like, well, so when you say, like, being on Love & Hip Hop, you feel like they key on, and this is just not an indictment of them, just our reality shows in particular, they're out to show a little bit more of the drama and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that's what people like to see, though. So it's not like I can't be mad at Love and Hip Hop or VH1. Like, mm-hmm. that's what people like to see. What well, do you feel like in any way that it wasn't a fair reflection? Do you feel like your relationship was a little bit going a little bit better than what the show portrayed? Um, I don't know, because I do know that I wasn't completely myself on the show. How do you mean? Like, as far as being open with a lot of things, only because I felt like at that time in that relationship, I felt like I had to kind of like hide a lot of things pretty much what like what what would you i mean i mean he made it blatant like obviously like he was disrespectful like and i felt i felt like it wasn't at the time it wasn't as bad until it was time to film Mm -hmm. then shit just went way south and I, i just never understood that right yeah so prior to being on television with that relationship Mm -hmm. how was the relationship going I mean, well, I've known him 10 years, so we weren't together a whole 10 years. Did, did you know him? Pre- because everyone thinks that we were together for 10 years, and it's like, you've been dealing with this for that. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. Like, in that 10 years, it was like two totally different people, maybe three or four. Mm-hmm. But it was not the same person I originally You know him 10 met. years from, from today, so you knew him since 2009. 
Yeah, I think we met in 2009. No. I feel like it was before that. Am I lying now? Is it like more than I'm 10 years? I'm asking you. I think I was 17 or 18. So post I'll crank be, that though. After um, crank that. Right after or during. It was like during or right after. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I was like 17, 18. I'll be 30 this year, so. You old, man. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, I'm much older than that, by the way. So let me ask you this. Watching the rise, because you're no stranger to celebrity. Mm -hmm. Your your father, if, if you guys who are listening to the show don't know, uh, <laughs> Nia's dad is Teddy Riley, the inventor of New Jack Swing and a musical genius. So um, your father being uh, as prominent as what he is, it must be, you must not be really that impressed by fame. I'm not. Right. How was it watching somebody become famous, though? Because most of the people that you met before, you probably already knew them while they were famous. How was it watching him become famous? Um, I was young, so it wasn't, and like you said, like, it wasn't something that really impressed me. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, you know, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it, like, people asked me about my dad and growing up with him. And I'm like, it was normal to me. Right. Um, I do feel like it it changed the more successful he got, maybe, or the longer he was in that environment. Definitely, I think. What changed? Um, see, I don't know if it's because we were kids and then we got older and things just changed, or if it was just him and things that he went through, or even myself or what I went through, mm -hmm. like becoming an adult. And um, I don't know. Like we were, we were never that. Like, we never argued when we first met. But then again, it's like, we're 17, 18. What do we really what have to be arguing, arguing about? about yeah. So, um, you know, I in the meantime, when we were apart, that's when I was in another relationship and I had my daughter. Mm -hmm. So we got back together after she was born when I moved back to L.A. That was, like, almost six years ago. Mm -hmm. And right before, or right around right after starting Love and Hip Hop, I feel like that's when I realized I was dealing with a whole other person. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it changed the then. Yeah. And that changed until what? Hmm? What what how do you, how did he change? Oh God, I don't know how to say. <laughs> mm. I don't I mean not like in a mature way. Right. It was like dealing with someone totally different. Mm. And because we were we were definitely like we were kids, so things were like a little more playful. It wasn't taking much serious like I don't know if he was back then, like, I'm sure he was talking to other girls and dating other girls, but mm -hmm. that was never a thought. Like, you know, right. like it wasn't something I was like, I wonder what he's doing today. I wonder if he's with somebody like it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. So once we got older and tried to start a new adult relationship, it was way more intense. Do you this is going to be what? So a real question. Do you think it's fair to expect fidelity from a rapper? Like rapper NBA, okay, football guys can sometimes be faithful because don't nobody even know who they are, right? They got helmets on and shit like that. They go to the club, don't nobody know who they are. Do you think I'm? I'm this is just a question. Do you okay, think so it's fair to ask for fidelity from a rapper or NBA player? I'm gonna say this because I'm a woman, but I've also said something else before. But I feel like because I am a woman, that's what we want. That's what we expect, and I feel like that's the right thing to say. Like, yeah, not, no, nigga, I don't want you to cheat on me. Yeah. Period. Right. But then it's also like, yeah, you are a rapper, or you are an athlete, or whatever. Bitches are coming for you. That's what they do, especially when you're on TV or whatever you're doing. Like, that's what they want, and right. they want attention, and it's like it's there. And I, what I used to say, I like, long as I don't see that shit, that's none of my business. So what then? What has to happen for you to feel disrespected? What do you mean? Meaning, like, so if if you if there's a thing to where you go, okay. So first when of you all, say don't see it, what do you mean? I don't want to see it. Like, shouldn't no bitches be in your house? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't no bitches have the nerve to come to me about it? Right. Like, come to you as a woman? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, you're not gonna play those games. Don't come to me as a woman. Right. But uh, yeah, I feel like I don't know. I kind of feel. I still feel like that. But then it's like nobody wants to get cheated on. Nobody does. And th Nobody. Th th not even a man. But see, a rapper. Not even a man. Or what are you talking about? W women women deal way, women deal with being cheated on. Way worse. Way better Absolutely. than Absolutely. But we. we your, your, your homies is acting hard out there. Yeah. If they girls cheat on them, they're going to be suicidal. Yeah, I, I, oh, I so, know. So don't, so don't <laughs> trip about that at all. That's not even a I know. thing. Yeah. But they, we can't get that. And we got to tell them for it and deal with it. 
I'm but just let asking. us do it. Yeah, I mean, oh, listen, I know because the way men are and how territorial. A lot. I, I, I've known guys who have been through this. Mm-hmm. I've been through it, mm-hmm. and the way it happens is you start to think, "Yo, man, is everything about you?" You start to examine, like, "Am I too broke? Is the <laughs> dick game not working right? <laughs> like, what is the like? What's the deal?" You know, in 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 um in college, it was all about if dudes were in like fraternities and shit like that. You know, it was like, yo, I don't want to lose it. No Kappa nigga, no Alpha nigga, nothing really? like that. Yeah, that's how I was, friend. Listen, I was fat. I had a lot of insecurities. Oh, man. you were a fat kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so cute, though. Yeah, but you know, the reality is I don't like you, like, looking down on me and patronizing me like that. Like, But anyway, back to you. <laughs> um, but so that stuff was going on. And do you feel like at some point he became flagrant with it? Or I mean, he's a very famous guy. So what what happened to, to for you to for you to draw a line and feel like things are going too far uh I, I honestly i feel like i just woke up one day and i was over the shit mm. it got to that point All right i literally woke up one day and was over it mm. and i feel like there were other things that came into play that didn't make him being with other women as serious you mm. know i took being disrespected directly from that person more serious than you cheating on me and, right you know what i mean like it mm-hmm. just, it was too much, way too much. So, super famous again now. Am I? You both are. Oh. How does that make you feel, seeing them everywhere now? I'd prefer not to, but it is what it is. What, what expound upon that? Like, like, I mean, listen, the reality is that God came out, said a lot of things that are very true in terms About? of his, his impact on hip hop. Okay. Some of that stuff is very true. Okay. I, I I agree to Some, a certain extent, yeah. Right. And then a lot of it a lot of the other stuff was just him being super bombastic and he's now experiencing a brand new season. Or do you how, how does that jibe with you being that like where are you guys at right now? Uh we don't speak right now. You don't talk to him? Mm Should I? I'm asking listen, I I, I wanna know. Like you like you 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 don't you don't speak to him even though he's in the midst of this sort of resurgence. Oh, because he's getting a lot of attention right now. I should you think I'm just gonna be thirsty and be like, "What you doing?" No, y'all uh, just did a reality show together, though. We did, right? And so I would think that in the reality show, you guys were trying to mend the relationship, right? Yep. Did that work? Nope. Why didn't it work? You didn't see all the things nah. he was doing on the internet. I, well, I feel like he was in uh, like three. It's been about what is it? March. He's mm. probably been in three relationships on the internet since January. Right. So what are these three? Like, there was one with Black China. Mm-hmm. Do you think that was real? I don't know. How do you feel about that? The Black China. Situation? I feel no way about it. You don't have any issues with Black China. For what? Okay. Like honestly, for what? <laughs> he gets popping and he pops yeah. up with Black China. I mean, because honestly, like, it's not, nobody's going to get a treasure out of that. Nobody. And that's a promise. I know that for a fact. Mm. It's not a prize. Mm. So I feel no way. All right. But you won't do these things and use them to try and, like, get back at me. You feel like some of that is him trying to get back at you? Yeah. To a certain extent, I do. Like, to piss me off, but it's like, Okay, the right. least you could have did was wait until the show was done airing to do all the bullshit you're doing right now. That's mm. the least you could have done. Right. I'm not on the internet with a different nigga every other day. Have you ever seen me post anything with a guy no, that's not gay, like a gay homeboy? Like, right. no. I haven't. I don't do that. So is that, is that kind of the disrespect that you were talking about? Exactly. Because it wasn't like I just randomly was out there like, oh, I'm single and I'm doing this and that. Like, no, it's like your actions and what you do. Like, why would I sit there and pretend that or let everybody think that you're cheating on me and mm-hmm. be quiet? Like, you know what I mean? Like, exactly what you said. We're on a show right now. So mm-hmm. it's like, just wait until wait, it's over. Wait, is the show still going on right now? Yes. Oh, On shit. Thursdays. Wow. Yes. Hmm. We have like a good three more weeks. Three more weeks. And so three more weeks of the show being on mm-hmm. and you see him out there with Black China. Who I don't know who the other girls were. He doesn't even know who the other he girls were. He doesn't know are. who the other girls were. And you, <laughs> and you feel like that kind of undermines what you guys were doing, makes you look bad. I do. I think it made me look bad, only because it's like, we could not be together. That's fine. But you don't have to go 
putting all different kind of relationships on the internet. Because at first, it looked like like the show aired, and then like the next week, you're on the internet with a girl. Mm-hmm. And you're telling girls you love them, and they're like, that's fine, but I can't be quiet. Right. And make it seem like you're just cheating on me again publicly. Right. So I felt like I had to say something, and I did. I said I was single. Mm. So How did he react to that? That was a problem. But I said that I had a problem with you not waiting until the show was over. Like, you don't know how to be discreet. It's like everything has to be for show. Did When you guys were on the show together, were you sincerely trying to work things out, or was that for TV? Um... I was because right before we got on marriage boot camp, we weren't together Mm -hmm. and he wanted to work on the relationship. And I had been saying like, you know, I think the both of us needed therapy. Absolutely. So Mm -hmm. I felt like marriage boot camp was a good opportunity to do that. And, you know, it was a lot. It was so much back and forth, like up and down the entire time we were there. Mm -hmm. Like it was slightly nerve wracking. It was. If you need therapy, why not go to a therapist around here in Los Angeles I agree why, okay so what made you I want agree. to do it on honestly, television honestly who do you think he was going to do it without getting a check for it okay so that was part of what you did to kind of convince him to go through mm-hmm. with it mm, I see and I, it's not like I'm like uh, it didn't work at all yeah. I do think he probably realized some things about himself as did I mm-hmm. I did too so uh, it it not working I don't know who to blame it on? What did what did you going throughout the therapy situation? Like, what did you learn about yourself? You know, things that I how kind of how I am now. I don't know it based off of my childhood and then things I've gone through as an adult. I don't know where it was that like I kind of changed as a person. Like, you know, I went through things when I was younger, but I always push things way to the back of my mind and think that's not. That's not why I'm acting like this. Like, Mm -hmm. as far as, like, I talked about on the show, um, as far as me being, like, affectionate and things like that. Because when I lost my virginity, I was raped. So one of my therapists was Dr. V. And she feels like that a lot of that came from that situation. So you, it's hard for you to show affection because... I kind of agree with her, but then I'm like, maybe that's just how I am. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just me trying to push that way, way back there and not blame it on that. Right. So that situation being so traumatic and happening to mm. you so early on, um, have you had normal relationships with men since then? Yeah, I it, have. That's why I'm like, I don't, I feel like that's not it. Right. But I don't know. I don't know. Right. But I have, you know, I have my daughter's father and mm. I've been in other relationships as well. So yeah. I think, I think it might have affected me as far as like communicating properly. Mm. But um, what do you mean about that? I don't, uh, I don't know. It's gone back and forth, I feel like, with a lot of relationships. Like, I felt like I, with Dre and I, I feel like we communicated really well, and then it got to a certain point where it was just like, mm-hmm. I didn't know what to say anymore. Right. Like, the communication just wasn't there mm-hmm. at all. Does he talk like that, like, regular? What? Like, how he talks everywhere he goes? Like, he, yeah. is he like, is he no. just like... He's, he's very articulate. Really? Yes. I, I'm not, uh, hey man, when I said really, when he wants that wasn't to, be. to besmirch my black brother, soldier boy, oh but I'm God. just saying he, what, you don't, what, I, as, as black men, we have to stick together, man, so I'm not trying to cast any aspersions on his intelligence, I'm just mm-hmm. saying he doesn't seem to lean into that part of himself, why? I have no idea, but initially with doing Love and Hip Hop, that was something that I why I agreed to do the show too because I'm like I think people should see another side of him Mm. you know what I mean I was like he's not a dummy he's very smart oh that's for sure yeah I'm like he's smart people don't even know how smart he is so it was just like certain things I was like I think you should show the world this like Mm. you know what I mean and I knew how much we cared about each other so me going into doing Love and Hip Hop there's no way like I didn't think for one second that that would have a bad outcome ever Mm. I never thought he'd be disrespectful to me publicly on TV like that. I never, n- I never would have imagined that. Do you wish now any part of you that you wouldn't have done it? No, I did it. It's, it is what it is. Like, I don't regret it. Right. No. How, how do these reality shows... <laughs> what? I'm not, what? What? I'm not, Come on. I'm what? Not, well, I'm not listening. I'm, how do they what? How, how do these reality shows work? Like, like what? Like, when, in Love & Hip Hop, 
you're saying that things would happen between you and him and mm-hmm. you didn't know that they were going to happen. So mm-hmm. all that stuff is not all set up. No, you know, honestly, they don't tell us who we're filming with. Mm-hmm. They really don't. Um, and I know a lot of people ask that they're like, it isn't, it's not scripted. And I'm like, I don't know about anybody else but myself. Like, I know the things I did weren't scripted. And whoever I filmed with, like, that situation, like, it wasn't ever scripted. But, mm-hmm. yeah, and most of the time, we don't even know who we're filming with at all. Mm. Like, even if it's, like, our girls, like, we just don't know. till right. we pull up and go on set. And then we start a conversation, then we leave. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's like is a topic you got to stick to obviously but i was never like sat there like say this 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 isn't this. i'm like right because i wouldn't be able to remember anyway <laughs> right, right, word, 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 word. so you know and it's stuff that's actually going on right so on the real yeah and what about you guys in the future any future for y'all who me, me? You're, in, you're in soldier boy no future no no future whatsoever. No. You've been there. You're not going back. Uh, what was the breaking point? Um, I feel like the uh, all the mess that started as soon as the show aired and the things that have been shown on the show, like seeing it, like being in it, it was like, okay, that was fucked up. But then actually having to see it. And now, then I haven't seen the show so specifically. People, what are you talking about? Uh, well, last Thursday's episode. Mm-hmm. You haven't seen anything about that? I haven't that. seen it, no. Well, on that episode, um, we get into an argument, mm-hmm. and he basically, he tries to attack me. Physically? Yeah. Physically. On television? Mm-hmm. You feel like this was a serious attack? Yeah. Wow. I mean, like, he didn't punch me in my face or anything mm-hmm. like that. Honestly, I think for a second he forgot the cameras were actually there mm-hmm. because we weren't like filming with real cameramen. It was the middle of the night. So, right. but in our rooms, there's cameras in the corner. Right. So yeah, he got upset because I wasn't feeding into his bullshit. And I started to talk to him exactly how he speaks to me. And he got upset about it. Hmm. Has there ever been any physical abuse between you two in the past? Yes. Wow. Um, how bad? I'd say it was pretty bad. Definitely pretty bad. And there have been people there. So, at what point in your relationship did that start? Ooh, I'm not even exact. It was definitely after Love and Hip Hop had started. Mm. Yeah. Um, and how, I guess, walk me through that. Like, was that that's something that there's an ongoing discussion about right now obviously yeah people are talking about it now we're talking about it now you know blogs have posted the clip and i think that you know i think a lot of people are trying to make light of the situation like oh well he didn't really touch her and that's fine like i'm not about to go on the internet and post pictures of black eyes or like anything like that like i don't really have to go that far to prove it it's been that bad with black eyes and things of that nature Mm, maybe wow so going through that in such a with with such a public person and um how do you keep that how do you keep something like that to yourself? Like how do you like what I don't know how I did it, but I did for a really long time. And that honestly if that wouldn't have aired on TV and I honestly I did not think they would use that and put that on TV. I didn't. Hmm. Um I still wouldn't have said anything. Publicly, no. Hmm. Um, but there have been other people that have said things. That have said, like, yeah. I, I haven't seen the like, ha- friends of yours? No, like friends of his, family, mm-hmm. and people ignore it. So I felt like, what am I going to say anything for? Yeah. Because it was blatantly ignored. So why would I say anything? You know what else happens in situations like this? It's like... Um, a lot of times when, you know, when we're talking about a, an athlete or a rapper or somebody like that, mm-hmm. and they have those allegations against them, they have, like, throngs of fans and people who love them, and they make it hard mm-hmm. on the woman that is making the accusation because they're like, oh, man, she's doing this, she's lying, she's doing this, because they have such a connection to the person's music or who they are. Yeah. Was there ever a part of you that 
just didn't want to go through all of that, have yeah. people question it and have people yes. come out and say. That's exactly what I didn't want. And that's exactly what's happening right now. But some people are saying it's fake. It was fake mm-hmm. because it's a reality TV show. And I'm like, I would never fake any form of an abusive relationship on TV. Like, never. Mm-hmm. I'm not an actress. Like, you just don't do that. Right. And it wasn't, no. It wasn't like it was discussed prior. Like, no, it was literally the middle of the night. Would you say that these situations happen frequently with you and him, physical altercations? Uh, Enough. Like, enough to where it was something that you were afraid of? Yeah, enough to where I should have left a very long time ago. What made you stay? (sighs) Honestly, I, I felt like I was always trying to protect him and then you know things that happened that scared me when I would leave as far as himself and I just I don't know not to sound like but I felt like he needed me around Mm. you know what I mean not even so much relationship wise like that wasn't the main thing on my mind like oh we just have to be together like I really cared about his well being and that's why I stayed a lot because I felt like he really went through a lot of things when I wasn't there or wasn't around and I felt like he needed somebody that's so that's so interesting that you say that because a lot of women and people to be honest with you in similar situations they develop a sort of relationship with uh, their abuser um, for lack of a better word where they kind of see through even the violence to some person that they really feel like needs help from them or needs them Mm -hmm. or, or can't go on without them. Um, uh, was prior to this last time, have you addressed this with him? Have you said, have you, did you ever talk to him or anybody around him about the fact that this was going on and that it needed to stop? And that was there ever like any sort of confrontation like, how does I, I put me into the, the situation that you're going through? Is there a fear of him? Is there a loathing? Is there a situation to where you, you, you try to ask him to get help for it or anything like that? Yeah, I asked him to get help before. Like, as far as, you know, uh, a few years ago, he went on the Internet and said he was going to kill himself. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Um, and then I kind of blame that on myself. Because I had left. Yeah, I had left. We had broken up. And it scared me. It honestly scared me to death. And I left. I wasn't there. And, um, you know, I went to the house that night. I got up, and he wasn't answering my phone calls, anybody's phone calls. And I went over there to check on him. Because I, I I didn't know. I didn't know what he was capable of or might do. But that scared me, and I I blamed it on he blamed it on me too. But I definitely blamed it on myself. Yeah, kind of one of those tactics they use to kind of keep you keep you tethered. So at that point, did that lead to you guys like kind of rekindling the relationship and yeah. talking again, right? Mm-hmm. Because you were afraid for his safety yeah. and you felt like you were responsible for his safety. Yeah, I did. Um, so listen, being that all of this stuff has gone down between you uh, between you guys, and mm-hmm. you know he's everywhere now um have you tried to talk to other people about your experience with him have you have you spoken to do all your friends know about this does your family know about this does your father know about this um really like no one knew until that episode until like last week because then the questions came like you know has he done it before or you know why would he try and attack you on tv or you know Mm -hmm. i didn't it's just not a conversation i ever had with anybody you kept it all to yourself besides the people that you said kind of saw it but i mean leading up to the episode like the people that are really close to me like that was something on my mind because i knew it happened but i wasn't for sure if they were going to completely edit it out and not put it on TV. Like, Mm -hmm. so for the last few months, like I've been thinking about it a lot. Like, are they going to air this? Like it's been driving me crazy. Have you been dreading it? Yeah, absolutely. My freaking Instagram is blown right now. Blown from people talking about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's on blogs and it's just like, I w- that's not something I was looking forward to. Like it was literally driving me crazy thinking about that airing. So is this kind of the, the fact that they put that on there, mm-hmm. is this kind of the thing that you were always worried about not wanting people to know about it? Yeah. I didn't want, because I didn't want to know other people's opinions and I, the people are just, they're harsh mm-hmm. either way. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? A lot of people said I'm dramatic and I'm just like, I've never said anything before. Like, how am I being dramatic? You've never seen me be dramatic about anything. I don't talk about my business. I don't put anything personal really on Instagram. Like, I barely even post my own daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because people and their negative opinions all the time, like, it's draining. Mm. And especially with this, I feel like it's a really sensitive subject. And people are still making light of it. Like, oh, he only grabbed your foot. Oh, he was reaching for your phone. Like, he wasn't thinking about that fucking phone at all. Hmm. What what is making you at this point? What's making you? Uh, why do you feel like now you can talk about it a little bit more freely and openly? Honestly, I feel like I waited, and I I feel like he should have said something. Oh, you you. I do. I feel like he should have said something. What would you have wanted him to say? You know, we it, on marriage boot camp. That was literally one of our issues that I brought up. Like all the times you've embarrassed me on the show, on the internet, whatever. You've never publicly apologized to me for anything ever so I then it then this happens and I'm like you still can't stick up for me in certain situations like if you see someone whatever they're saying on the internet about that video like the least you could do is be like you know what I was wrong like Mm -hmm. I what am I getting bashed for yeah (laughs) I I didn't do anything right you ran over to me yeah so it's like why can't you say so it doesn't even have to be like a long PSA or anything you're like you know what I was wrong in that situation I want to apologize to her because that ended up on TV period that's all you gotta say right you don't have to text me like I'm used to that you always do you know apologies through text or want to call me and apologize but you never publicly apologize so then it just looks like you just keep doing shit keep doing shit and then I, I at the back then yeah I kept forgiving him and put myself back in that situation. But I'm like, right now, the least you could do is say something on my behalf. Because I've never done anything to you for you to feel like you don't owe me that. that you owe me more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, have you guys spoken since it aired? No. When was the last time you spoke to him? Maybe weeks ago, probably. What do you feel like keeps him from sticking up for you or getting people off your back or? I do not know. And I feel like it's a sense of him feeling like he, I think he feels like sticking up for me and being all about somebody that he cares about. I feel like he feels like that's him being like a weak nigga or Mm. something. You know, you do think he cares about you though. I have, I have my mixed emotions about it because i feel like some things you just wouldn't do if you really cared about somebody right. you know what i mean like and if i ever publicly really went on him went in on him or did anything i would apologize the same way All right and i don't get that had you been in any other abusive relationships besides this one no never wow um so listen uh, people are going to hear this right mm-hmm. and when they hear this there's going to be a lot of people who right away their opinion of soldier boy is going to change right okay and he he was in the midst of this big sort of deal and this being your truth mm-hmm. is going to affect how people view him what are your feelings toward that the only reason why i'm, I'm not asking you to have any feelings mm-hmm. i'm just saying that's going to be part of the ammunition that people come at you with, right? They're going to say, people only say that stuff, stuff like this once somebody has some kind of big, huge moment. I don't, you can't say that because before he was having this big, huge moment, the show was filmed way before that. Why? Right. It was filmed way before that. So we didn't know he'd be here in this place right now. I didn't even know that would air. Yeah. I honest to God thought they would not use that. Like, I didn't know. Because in my mind, I was like, it might look like they're promoting domestic violence or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, I don't really know. Because I didn't. Yeah. I had no idea. They didn't tell us. All right. Yeah. Did you ever, did you reach out to them and ask whether or not, was that going to be in there or anything like that? <sighs> no, I you didn't. You just kind of, just yeah. kind of, just waited to kind of see? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I wouldn't have had a choice anyway. Right, yeah. Like, I didn't have, have no say-so. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. have no say-so on that. Has your daughter ever witnessed any of these uh, blow-ups between you and him? 
No, she's never witnessed anything. Never seen any of it? No. Right. No, because a lot of, you know, we were filming Love and Hip Hop a lot, and she would be, like, with my mom or a sister or something like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, How did, how does his relationship with, like, her? Um, I mean, I'll give him that 100%. Like, he's great with my daughter. Always has been. Right. And she loves him to death. Uh, have you ever had a conversation with her about some of these things that you and him have been through in the past? No, but... How old is she, by the way? She'll be six this year. Okay. Yeah. So she's right at that age where yeah. she's... She doesn't forget shit. Yeah. She remembers everything. Right. So, yeah. But you feel like you're going to have to have to con- have maybe have that conversation now? I don't know if she's old enough to have that conversation now. But, I, you know, I eventually I'm going to have to have that conversation with her for sure. Right. And then it's like, you know, he's not going to be around. Mm-hmm. So a conversation does have to be had with her eventually. Straight up question. Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. Are you? I think so. I mean, the, the media right now makes it a little harder, but I, I'm so good at ignoring shit sometimes. Never weighs on you? Never, never gets too much to take? Definitely too much. Definitely that night, the first like two days of that airing, it was, it was a lot. Just seeing other people's opinions and then, you know, being that nobody knew the text messages and, you know, speaking to my mom about it because she had no idea. Um, it was hard. It's harder for my family to see. Absolutely. Do you want an apology from him? No. Do, do you want to talk to him? I mean, do you want some sort of do you want like a, uh, for him to come back and admit how wrong he was? And, and it's not going to do anything for me. Do you want to never see him again? That's not in my plans. I don't see it in the future. I I don't, like, for what? For you to apologize? Mm. Like, I can't do anything with an apology anymore. We're Mm. past apologies. You know? Um, I dealt with a lot. I really did. Like, mainly, like, the embarrassment, the disrespect. And then now it's too much publicly. Like, it's beyond loving hip hop stuff or Instagram stuff. Like it's beyond that. When you say it's beyond that, what do you mean? I mean like it's beyond that as far as like what they've seen on marriage boot camp. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's almost like, oh, he just never stops disrespecting you. Like it's gone too far. Like I tried one more time mm-hmm. and we failed. If that show had never uh, if you guys have never uh, would have agreed to do that show, do you think that you would be talking about these things publicly? No. You definitely wouldn't have. You would have never let anyone know about the uh, the past abuse, the past disrespect, any of that stuff. No. You think you would have kept it to yourself? Yeah. Why? 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 Why do you? I'm. Why? Why wouldn't that be something that you would ever? Discuss? I. I wouldn't have spoke on it as far as like myself going through it you okay. know what I mean I see. but I've always felt a way about domestic violence and I posted things about it because it is something I went through but it, I I wouldn't post it as if it's personally me going through it like right. you know what I mean and I do know other people that have gone through that mm-hmm. and lost family members in the same way so I would talk about it but not from my own standpoint no do you feel like now is there a part of you that wants to maybe connect with other women that are going through it, be a voice for other women that have gone through it? At first, no, I didn't want to. I, not at all. Uh, I've The amount of messages I've gotten in DMs, like, it's ridiculous that how many women go through it and just never say anything. To the point I almost feel bad for never speaking on it. Wow. Yeah. Made you feel like maybe you could have done something? To a certain extent, yeah. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. Everyone goes through their own thing exactly. personally, and you have yeah. to fight your own. It's yeah, not, you know. Yeah. Um. So, the the first time you were in a physical altercation with him, what was it like? I don't want to talk about that. I mean, I, I mean, don't. what I mean by what do you mean? What I mean, like, what was it like? Was was were you shocked? Yeah, of course. But yeah. so it just came out of nowhere. There was no building up to it. No. There weren't, like, little things that I was just like, oh, okay, this might end bad one day. No. It just came out of nowhere. I feel like it did. And we talking about grabbing, or did he strike you, or? I don't want to say. 
fair. That's fair. You're giving me that look like, nigga, quit pushing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and very important to say, you guys, situations like this, very, very serious. Yeah. You're talking to victims. You do not want to pry. I was just trying to get a sense of. No, I um, know. I, yeah. I understand. Yeah. I get it. Um, uh, now, now that you're 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 past that part of it, mm-hmm. um, before I move on, do you want the world to know? How bad of a guy he is. No, that was never my intention to make people just think, oh, he's such a bad guy. And still, I haven't ever said that. Like, I even took up for him as far as, like, my daughter. Like, he's always been a good guy to her. Mm-hmm. Always. Like, she doesn't know any different. Right. Um, but it's not that he's just a bad guy. It's like, it's it was blatant. I don't feel like I had to say anything. Right. Ever, really. Because... No one ever saw him being respectful towards me. But it's like always when the cameras came on, it seemed like he felt like he had to treat me badly because that I think he almost thought that that made him look like a better man or like I, I honestly have no idea that his thought process in those things. Hmm. Um, and you sure you're OK, sister? Mm-hmm. You're doing all right. I think I am. I think so. I, I feel like I could be worse. But okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not in my bed all day, every day. I thought about it. thought about just sleeping for a few days and just not thinking about it and staying off my phone. But that's not going to do anything. Mm. What is that going to do? Yeah. So I'm going to go out, go to hookah. Go to hookah? Hollywood hookah? <laughs> Hollywood hookah. Y'all go nope, Hollywood. I don't go to Hollywood hookah. Well, I mean, y'all do. See, she, y'all try, she's trying to like, that's what everybody be at Hollywood hookah. Uh, Nia's manager, Naya, is here. <laughs> White people clap for Naya. Oh my goodness. Naya's here. Why do you have to say it like that? Is Naya is Naya? No, white people clap for uh Naya. <laughs> Cause let me t- let me tell you let me tell you why I say it. Let me tell you why you do that. Let me tell you why I say it like that. Because TMZ controlled by white people. Inside of this room, <laughs> it's controlled by you. It's controlled by me. <laughs> So we made the white people Understood. clap. And by the way, these are white people that I Understood. work with. These are my guys, right? Yeah. But they understand, you know. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm an Aries. Oh. Why? What does that mean? Trolling comes in. I'm not trying to be. <laughs> listen, I'm just saying. So you're going out and you're experiencing, mm. like you're you're out there, mm. like living and having a good time. You're not me. Yeah. I'm trying to. You're yeah. trying to. Yeah. How's I feel that working like- out? I feel like I should. Like, I can't let it consume me. I already took everything down off my Instagram. It's just I saw like, that. Like, I want some peace. I reached out when you did that. Yeah. I was like, yo, you, you straight? You did, yeah. Yeah, because I was like, once people pull the move where they delete everything off yeah. their Instagram, you always got to make sure that, yeah. they, that, they, that they doing yeah, all right. Yeah, I had a few people check on me. But I, it's just, it was a lot. And it's not even, uh, you know, I never... Like, I'm not, my goal isn't to end up on blogs every day. Like, I mind my business. I don't say anything. I don't speak up on other people's personal issues when they end up. Like, that's not my business. I don't do that. So for it to happen to me and all, I had a break for such a long time. Like, nobody was talking about us being in a relationship or even putting us together anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, so I had peace. Like, I could get on my Instagram in peace for a while. Like, and now it's just so much at once. Almost out of nowhere. Hmm. It's just a lot. Um, what 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 is next? Like, what are you what are you into? Like, what's your like? What 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 are you what are you doing? Right now, honestly, I'm sp- like spend all of my time with my daughter, mm. pretty much. So I'm just now putting her back in school. Mm-hmm. You know, I was homeschooling her, but that's you know that that's my thing mainly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Don't want to homeschool. Put it back in school. Huh? The homeschool kids are always weird. No, she's far from a weirdo. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying she's weird now. I'm saying that like <laughs> later after yeah, like she's, five years of homeschool, she's going back to school. She right. wants to, so I'm gonna let her. And then you know, I then I'll get my free time again too. Yeah. But that that meant the most to me too, because you know, as soon as I moved back to LA, I was on loving hip hop, and you know mm. that consumed a lot of my time. You moved out to LA from where? From Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta. That's where you, that's where you grew up. Yeah, most of my like my adult years. Yeah. I moved there when I was like 16. Where you where'd you come where would you come from before then? Before that I was in uh where was I? Damn. Virginia Beach. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You guys. <laughs> 
Teddy Riley and them from over Virginia. Legends. Virginia Beach. Before that, I was in Connecticut. Before that, I was in Maryland. Mm -hmm. was Have you ever been around when your dad was creating classic timeless tunes? You ever been in the studio and your dad? Because this is how I imagine I'm that. I'm sure, I probably I'm like, was. I'm, you're in the studio and you're playing, and he's like, "Chill." <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, my dad doesn't yet." Mm -hmm. And you're like, "Oh, you hear that shit? Lay that shit down." And then it becomes he doesn't no curse diggity. either. He doesn't curse or yell. He doesn't yell or curse. No, my dad's not a yeller. Ever? He talks just like this. Just like this the whole time. Yeah. I'm about to make some classic shit. Yeah. Just classic New Jack. He doesn't curse. Shit. Oh, okay, my bad. He's <laughs> <laughs> thinking about that. Um. What was it? What like? When did you realize that your pops was Teddy Riley? People said it. <laughs> I mean, like, no, but like, there's a moment where, like, I don't know. I, you know what? I think probably I kind of have a vivid memory of us like being in the airport and somebody ran. I up feel to like him. I've always known he was somebody, but mm -hmm. you know, I mean, people always kind of came up to us whenever we we were together. Mm. So like, everybody used to tell me like how bad like my dad was, like what a mean son of a bitch my dad was. Mm -hmm. I never really, you know. Believed it? No, because he was very nice. You See know, you. he would pick me up. Hey, son, how you right. doing? And then one day we were on a job site, <laughs> and the dude said something to my dad. My dad took a two-by-four, hit the ground with it, broke the two-by-four, and the man started crying. What? He was like, this is a true story. He was like, he was like, the man started crying, and he was like, please, Terry, please. And I was like, look at my Uncle Craig. I was like, why is this dude <laughs> acting like dad is the, and, but they, weren't talking to me because they were trying to hold him back. Uh -huh. Then my Uncle Ray was telling me, like, your father is a bad motherfucker and men around here knew it. Uh -huh. Was there a moment like that for you? That was actually just an excuse for me to tell a charming anecdote okay. about my dad. Um, it, it, like, was, was there a time like that for you to where some kind of big time artist, uh, you saw them in your house and you were like, yo, hey, that's so-and-so or something like that? In my house? Or like anywhere. I've seen him. I don't Nigga, remember give that. me a cool story about being Teddy Riley's daughter. Shut up. Shit. You know what? The I think I had the most fun once when I um, met uh, Stevie Wonder. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. We went to the studio, and uh, I think it was me and my mom. And we mm -hmm. went there. And his wife, I don't know if it's the same one, right, as of right hey, now. Hey, man, don't get, trying to get Stevie no in trouble. It could have been. I don't know who it was. It was a woman with him, on, though. Dry snitching on Stevie. <laughs> man, we don't know who it was. Yeah, I met Stevie, Stevie was with Wonder. A, was, was with a lady, okay? Shut up. Uh, I don't even know how old I was. I was maybe like 12. By the way, it's very, very, Stevie might not know who the woman was either. Oh. Oh my God. God! I'm just saying, there's no way you could put any woman next to Stevie and tell her that she's anybody. Stevie's really not gonna know. But go ahead. Yes, he we're is. Gonna how is he gonna know? We're gonna pray for you. How is, how would Stevie know? Like literally, I could put my oh mom my next God. to Stevie and be like, "Yo, Stevie, this is your wife." Oh, it's <laughs> no, like Stevie not gonna know. He's gonna know that's not his wife. Nah, I don't know. You don't know who exactly. I don't know so if Stevie rude. gonna know. I don't know if y'all ever saw this. Go You're back and look. So this. Rude. Go back and look at this. No, there was a we're performance not about with that. Cisco and. At the VMAs, they left Stevie on the stage. The Stevie was doing Wild Wild West. It was Cisco. It was Cisco who? It was Cisco and Will Smith. They did Wild Wild West. Stevie was on there. Oh, we go on Wild Wild West, and they walk off the stage, and no one remembered to go and get Stevie Wonder and bring him off the stage. And nigga, Stevie was sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are horrible. Anybody? It's true. So anyway, Stevie was with some lady, and yeah. then he came up to your dad, and he was like. Oh, how are you doing there, R. Kelly? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm sorry. <laughs> that was too much. Because we wouldn't want to compare him to R. Anyway, Kelly. Anyway. Yeah. It was a good memory. Mm -hmm. She, we did something. We played a trick on him with some. Yeah, I bet you guys with did. Some cookies or something. You know what? You probably gave over. Probably the conversations gave, probably over. Gave, over. Uh, probably gave Stevie some shrimp and told him it was a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> And you're like you probably you probably man shout out to Stevie Wonder that's a legend. Um, I have a question. Does your dad? Do you ever ask him if he kept in touch with the woman playing a saxophone in the Rump Shaker video? <laughs> you know what? What? Somebody. I feel like recently somebody told me they knew who that woman was. Yo. It's I'm not gonna so lie. Weird. That really came up. I vividly remember that coming up recently, but I can't remember who it came from. Like we we never listen. Here's the deal. Of all the videos that was who she that is. was hot. I'm gonna ask him. Rump shaker. Yeah, <laughs> ask him right now. Get him on the phone. Let's see if he'll answer. Like, hey, get him on the phone right now, because because I think that he probably knows. He's in London, so I'm gonna oh have my to god, Teddy Riley is such a bad. He's in London right now. Hey, oh, Dad. Wow. 
Oh hey. my God, it's Teddy Riley. <laughs> hey, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? Do you know Van? <laughs> hey, Taj. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Listen, I. We, we, Hey. hey, what's up? That's my sister. Hey, how y'all doing? I have I have one question for you, and I, I always told you this is what I would ask Teddy Riley if I ever got him. You know, we're doing an interview with Nia right now. Do you have the information on the girl that was playing the saxophone in the Rump Shaker video? Do you know where she's at right now? Yes, I do. Hey, you got to give that up for the people, Teddy. <laughs> We, we haven't seen her in a while, man. We need to know where she at. Well, watch what I say. <laughs> if you want to deal with Bobby Brown, you can't because that's his wife right now. Oh. You lying. Really? What? Oh, yeah, my God. Really? You, you lying. Oh, my God. Give it up for the legend Teddy Riley right now, man. Give it up for Teddy Riley. Wow. Hey, brother. Seriously, we really appreciate all of your contributions to music and everything you've done, man. I'm a huge, huge fan. Seriously, brother. You guys, let me tell you something. The woman playing the saxophone in the <laughs> Rump Shaker news. video, I don't know if you guys heard this, <laughs> is currently married to Bobby Brown. <laughs> wow. This, that, Rump Shaker, yeah. You, have, you never saw Rump Shaker before? Oh. Nigga, did you have, did you live before this? Did you have a childhood? What, oh, but really? you never you never saw or heard Rump Shaker before. No. Wow. I bet. Uh, what's a song? Who used that sample? Who did? Jay Z, the, right? What song? Oh yeah, for uh, Show Me What You yeah. Got. Uh, so you dating anyone? Nope. What oh, kind cool. of guys do you like? I don't have a type. Oh jeez. <laughs> I don't. Oh, she really doesn't. You don't have a type? I've dated white guys. I dated really a, an Ecuadorian guy before. White guys. How long did you date the white guy for? Which one? You've dated like, multiple. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm mean, listen. I'm not hating. No, listen, you shouldn't. I if like you white like guys. your penis undercooked, then that's your thing right there. If you like it a little I medium like sushi, rare, so it's cool. Wow. So, oh, there she is. <laughs> hey, there she is right there. Bobby Brown, you a bad motherfucker. Look, Bob, wow. y'all. I gotta tell y'all. That's my uncle. So, what, like, which one's your uncle? That one with the stripes. And the stripes. Look dad. at Teddy Riley getting it. Listen, <laughs> one day, me and my friends, we were on our way to a basketball game. This is a true story. Mm. We're on our way to a basketball game. My dad had an illegal burner cell phone. Uh, and like, when you are snitching on your dad today. My dad had my. <laughs> listen, check this out, real quick. Real quick story about the cell phone. So, <laughs> my dad had an illegal burner cell phone, right? early 90s around the time that this video was coming out this the cops came to the house and the cops were like yo do you know anybody that's been calling this home from this number mm -hmm. and me being a young fucking g oh my God. i was like no not at all he was like seriously because this person's been calling this number like all the time i'll never forget the guy had a detective thing on his deal and the whole night i was like i don't know call my dad right away my dad my dad was like i was like yo dad just to let you know. By the way, I called my dad. I called the cell phone number from the house phone. And I called my dad like, yo, they come in, they, 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 the dude came by with my dad was like, oh, for real? Oh, for real? Oh, shit, I'm about to throw this bitch in the body. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, oh my like, God. <laughs> so my dad got rid of the cell phone, threw it away. We beat the feds, man. Feds can't fuck Oh, away. my God. But, they coming now. So here's the deal. <laughs> shit. So we had just left and we were going to the basketball game. We, we was out the house maybe 30 seconds. My mom called and said, I can't, like, talking to my dad, don't forget to bring this home. She's like, um, I can't believe this video with these girls on here shaking their asses and stuff like that. And my dad was like, what video? And then I was like, yo, is she talking about Rump Shaker? We turned the car around, came back as a father and son. To watch the video? And watch the Rump Shaker video, man. This was part of my awakening right here, bro. Make sure I look at these niggas dancing though. That's not, that wasn't Teddy Riley them right there, was it? Doing that little dance. Mm -mm. Look at this. And then there's this one girl, because there are two different versions of this video, right? There, there are. Oh, this is the one. See, there's one where, okay, so there's one version of this video where this girl dancing right here in a fluorescent bikini, where at the end she's going to turn around in a second, and when he says, make the booty wop, it's going to get a close-up. But on MTV, they would push in so tight on this to where you couldn't see her ass. That's why when I was taping it, I taped the other version. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to you. Your pops is a legend, man. It's hilarious. So you date white guys, though? Yeah, not just white guys, but yeah. Look, 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 look. See what I'm saying? 
<laughs> are you gonna pause it, really? <laughs> See what I'm saying? That's crazy. And that, look how natural her body I know, is shout too. Shout out to the real body. Well, shout out to the natural. Good. So you, so but you, you, you date white guys. How many white guys have you dated? Uh, well, are we talking about first two. of all, are we talking about regular white guys, or are we talking about John B's? John B's. <laughs> like which? Because like white, white, or like like white, white, or like this nigga's on the basketball team, white. white Both. White. White, I've white. I've dated like white, white, and then I've dated like cool white. Okay. Do you feel like there's any difference in dating white dudes? Of course. What's the difference? I mean, they'll understand a lot of things, like hair-wise. Like, right. You know, I'll wear my natural hair sometimes, then I'll put a wig on. And then they'll be like, is this a wig right here? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, like, is, so what? when white guys fuck around and say the wrong shit, mm-hmm. how do you deal with it? What's the wrong shit? I, I haven't had that happen to me personally. And they've never said anything like off? Like that's just a little weird? You know what I'm saying? No, but you know what? I think white guys are more like affectionate with their friends. Like, you know what I mean? Like affectionate with their friends. Like not like you know what I mean? They like, like play around more. Like know, niggas like gay or not. yeah. Oh no, like, I mean you know what I mean? Nah, but 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 like that's some uh, you know you know not to d- d- get into generalizations. Yeah, they 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 play around like that a lot. Yeah. So I'll be honest with you. Another quick story, like it, it like the it, like I had a friend, a black kid that was on the soccer team. Uh, at a school mm. in Baton Rouge and they were talking about it was like yo man I'm not gonna play soccer no more and I was like why he was like because on this fucking soccer team they were all in the hotel room oh, and they were like doing weird shit like he said one dude put his balls on another dude's head <laughs> See, that's the first no. time I ever heard about <laughs> teabagging right and like one, he's like one dude like the dude fell asleep and he put his balls on the other guy's head and I remember being so upset, I was thinking to myself, yo, why would he put his balls on his friend's head? And they were like, it's like a game that they play. I'm like, yo, what? I was that super pissed off. Disgusting. Like, I've never met a black dude <laughs> that has been teabagged or been involved in teabagging before. But watch this. They Austin, do it, though. <laughs> have you ever teabagged somebody? No. Have you ever been teabagged? No. You're a lie, nigga. <laughs> like, you know that you, uh, Maddie, have you teabagged? No. Yeah, they teabag before. So you, so the, these white boys that you were talking about, they they teabag someone is what you're saying. Probably, I yeah. can see that happening. <laughs> Are they were, they were they rich? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. So you've dated a broke white boy before? Yeah, I was young though. Let me tell you something, sister. I was young. Let me tell you something. If what? you're gonna get a white guy, mm-hmm. if that's what you're gonna do, I support it. I'm not hating on it at mm-hmm. all. Love who you want to love, but if you're gonna do that to the community. As the daughter of Teddy Riley, one of our great black leaders, who, who? at least let the nigga be rich. Okay. We can't see. It's you not a here. lot of like cool rich white guys out here. Like who? I don't know. You're oh, supposed. You the one that's supposed to know. Help white me dudes. out then. Like, so you dated an Ecuadorian guy. So are you off black guys now? I'm not saying that. I still like black men. Mm. Like I'm not. I'm not that person that'll let. One guy run if, you off. From yeah, the whole like race. it's not gonna affect. Like I still, brothers sound I still, so weak when they do that. Yeah, by the way. I Y'all still want to be hey. in love. Like, and I don't. I'm like, I'm not bitter, and I'm not gonna take anything that my past relationship, whatever happened, I'm not gonna take it out on anybody else. Like, yeah, you shouldn't. That was that. You should. I think I know how to let some things go. Now, I've would never you date another guy with a tattoo in his face? Maybe that should be a line that you draw. Because I don't get the tattoos in the face. Sure. I don't. No get tattoos it. on the face. No tattoo. That we're gonna. We we're, do that. We're gonna make that rule. Cool. No tattoos in the face. My next guy can't have tattoos. On can't his have face. a tattoo in the face. Now, after you date him, but if he, you want to go forward in the future to a tattoo on the face, mm-hmm. you can. But right now, it's gotta the stop at the next one. The n- right after. Nah. No <laughs> tattoos in the face. No. None. Zero. Okay. Period. Zero. Got it. Naya, make sure she uh. She no says, tattoos on the face. I don't think I'm interested with anybody with tattoos on their face right I'd now. Say no rappers too. No rappers, nah, because no, you never, you can't say no rappers though. Because well, like, what if you I'm meet? All for the white boys, what if you meet? You're all for the white boys. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, you're you're like a. I could tell in your voice though. <laughs> say something again. Like, say something. <laughs> I could tell in your voice that you like a no, little bit I don't of a. Have a type either. It's yeah. How you make me feel, and you got to be funny. That's my only really. Rule. So your your type is funny and white, is what you're saying. No. <laughs> my type is funny and funny and white. Funny and white is so cool. I like funny white boys. Really? Yeah. Like funny people in general. Like funny people in general. Yeah, just in laugh. general. Yeah. And you know what? I got. But white people humor and black people humor is totally different. different. So if you're a white guy and can make me laugh, then I gotta be real. Y'all say <laughs> the funny thing, but y'all leave out a component. What? Rich. 
You have to be able to, and I'll, I'll say that because we can't say it's, that it's because ugly, then it's that's ugly. What it's ugly, funny dudes. Is. It's ugly, funny guys out here struggling, struggling. I mean, I don't they only hilarious. date guys that are attractive. You date ugly I've guys? I've dated ugly guys before. Oh, for real? Yes. I like a medium ugly. Yeah, like in you, between. You like a medium ugly? Yeah, like you gotta be well, like, fine, what, like, fine. Okay, okay, so tell me what I a medium... I didn't think I've ever dated anybody that was like, damn, he's fine. Like, tell me what a medium <laughs> ugly is. Like, give me an example. I don't want to put nobody on black. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's a me? Okay, so, all right, so, all right, so a high key, give me a high key, great looking guy. White or black? Don't Travis matter. Kelsey. Huh? Tra she said Travis Kelsey. All right, by the way, <laughs> I know his old lady. That's my homegirl. Cool. I mean, <laughs> hey, Kayla, 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 Naya over here trying to rob you. <laughs> Kayla. With that couple, they're beautiful together, but. That, yeah, they they're, are. They're a nice hey, couple. I gotta say that. I gotta say right now. They're very good. I gotta say couple. right now, there's not a better looking swirl bunch than Travis and Kayla. Yeah. They doing it. They if you can, if you can think of a better swirl couple than Travis and my girl Kayla, then put it out there. They look great. So Travis Kelsey is high key, white. He ain't got no ugly. In him. He's just, got no he's ugly in him. Up. No ugly in him. All right. What about you? Who's the Who's the, the? You think of hot guy? Who do you think? Don't have to be white. Just hot guy. Who's hot? I don't know. Cause I don't. I don't feel like I'm that attracted to men that are like fine, fine. Okay. Just give me Let the me fucking see. guy. Cause you're beating around the bush. Fine? Who do I like? She is the hardest woman to please. I am not restroom, hard to please. Don't a tell that lie. A nail technician. Mm, so you don't even know do what you want. Makeup. You don't even know what you want, though. I don't think she doesn't know what she wants. She's just very particular. Just give me she knows a, what she doesn't want. So, oh, cool, cool. But just give me an example of a great looking guy. Just someone who is objective. Uh, I think uh, Idris Elba is a great looking black man. Fine. Was that so hard? No. Idris Elba. Everyone yeah. thinks he's great looking. Right. He's up there. So let's say we Brad start. Pitt. Brad Pitt. Ugh. Fucking uh, Achilles. Great looking guy, <laughs> all right? Brad Pitt up here. Now let's yes. slide down the scale a little bit. <laughs> so from Brad Pitt, you have probably right under Brad Pitt, you have guys like Zac Efron. I think Zac, Zac Efron is fine. Right, Zac Efron looks good. Not yeah. quite as good looking as Brad Pitt. And then right at, uh, under but, Zac Efron. Because Brad Pitt is grown, man, fine. Well, Brad, Brad, Zac Efron's like 30 years old, so I don't know how much growner you want the nigga to be. But, Brad but, Pitt is old, though. Yeah, older, like way older. 50s. Exactly. Okay, so then I, under Zac Efron, you have a sliding scale to maybe a guy like John Krasinski. I don't even know who that is. You don't know who John Krasinski is? Nope. You guys know John Krasinski? I see him. Who is that? Huh? The actor? I'm bad with names. Do you ever see oh, that? Oh, which one? He who? was on The Office. He was in that movie where they couldn't talk. A quiet situation. Does he have a big head? Kind of. Uh, is okay. his nose big too? A little bit, but be careful ethnically <laughs> when you're talking about people. We like, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's change the person. All right, okay, I don't let's think change it's the person. Him. Okay, no, let me think. Him. Let me think. Uh, come down from somebody. Under Zach Efron? Under, right under Zach Efron. Like, still good looking, but like right under that. Help me out. Why are we only naming white Hell people? No. Y'all did that. No. So 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 who is this? Did. Oh no, oh, that's a bill collector. So uh, so <laughs> like maybe like Pete Davidson. So give me like oh Machine Gun Kelly right under like. I the, like Machine Gun. Okay, Kelly. Yeah, of course you do. Mm -hmm. So then like right under <laughs> so so then right under that. You about to slide in the NBA. Yeah. Right under Machine Gun Kelly. You put go, that on the mind. Machine now. Gun Kelly will give. And he has so much work. He loves black women. Does he? Yes. He might go sliding them DMs. <laughs> yeah. That would be that that would be a hot celebrity does he couple, brother. Tattoos button. on his face? Does he? No, I don't think he does. Does he have tattoos on I his face? I know he they're they probably all the way up. Let Look, me see. we were talking about black men, not white men. <laughs> no, I asked y'all and y'all said. So anyway, so here's the deal. <laughs> I, I'm I'm looking, I'm really looking for what medium ugly is. Mm. Like, what's medium ugly? I don't know medium. Like, who was that guy? John what? John Krasinski. I'll show you. Let him. me see what he looks like. John Krasinski. Like Meek. Meek. Excuse me? He's, he's Who's that? medium ugly. Oh, Meek Mill. Oh. Okay, Meek Mill. Okay, so here's the deal. Let me tell you something. A lot of women I know think Meek Mill is very, very handsome. Shout out to Meek. A lot of women say Meek is cool, but his swag kind of brings it kind of brings me through. That's what it is. Shout out to Meek Mill. Now, I'm not saying shit about him, but like Meek Mill. So Meek. Oh, yeah, no, nothing negative to say. I was just. I got I, you. I've heard, mm. yeah. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Shout out. Nothing negative to say about Meek nothing. Mill. Nothing. Nothing negative at all. Shout out to Meek Mill. Right. We're happy you got out of jail. Um, but so that's kind of your your jam right there. Yeah, he's a nice looking guy. Meek Mill is a nice looking guy. Mm, all sure. Right. But with white guys, I bet you want them to be a little bit better looking. 
Yeah. 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 Because if you're going to do that to the community, it's got to be worth it. Yeah. Right? You got to be yeah. like, wow. She picked the do you think you could ever boy. procreate with a white man? Yes. Like have like a nice little. Yeah. Beige baby. Yeah. It'd be light. Super light. Yeah. My daughter's super light. Is, your, is her dad white? No. He should have been, though. What do you mean, should have been? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Damn. I will say this. I'm just kidding. No shade. I will say, no shade. I will say Literally. this. Literally. I, I will. No shade. <laughs> I will say this, though. Having. Like having a a mixed kid, mm. like a biracial kid, is like I have biracial cousins, mm. and I've told this story on this on this before pl- plenty of times. Mm. It's wild to me. What do you mean? It's like uh. they got a bunch of white ass cousins. <sighs> what was that? I had to sneeze. Like sneeze. they got a bunch like, of white ass cousins. You feel like you could be like have like that many white relatives and stuff like that? Yeah, like, I already have some. You have white relatives? Yeah. What you how how? how? Just it happens. My family is mixed with a whole bunch of different people. Well, mainly black and white people, but you don't have kids? some Latinos in there no somewhere. Kids, man. No kids, man. Nah, I'm t- I keep coming up with that five hundred dollars, man. Um. Wow. I think it's six now. <laughs> huh? It's about six now. Is it six? Yeah. I've actually never. I've never. I've, I've actually. I actually. That's like a horrible oh joke. I got God. that from my little brother who said it and meant it. I've never been through that. This is John Krasinski. Before I let you. Oh know. hell no. You don't think John no, Krasinski? No, absolutely not. Hold on, man. I gotta, I gotta check you on this. Uh, John Krasinski also looks like this if you want him on the TV. Yeah, like, John Krasinski. That's now, who I thought you guys were talking about. Right, John Krasinski. Bam, right there. What's wrong with him, Nia? First of all, he looks better with a beard. Yeah, yeah John, I John like Krasinski. Look, you, you will fuck yeah. with that. First of all, wait, wait, stop. Don't move this. <laughs> Look at all the shit up here that Maddie is looking up. Like, <laughs> like Maddie, Maddie's looking up Rex in the face. <laughs> Machine Black Gun Street. Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you guys out here. Thank you. Thank so you very much. So does he have face tats? Go to it. Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, yeah. Go to Machine Gun Kelly real quick. Does he have face No face tats. No face right. tats. I don't think he's he Because he acts now, Gun right? Kelly, shoot your so shot. So you can't really have any on hey, his face. Hey, this is, the name of this podcast is going to be... Nia loves Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> Machine Gun idea. Kelly. Shoot About, that shot. picture? Yeah. He's a nice looking white boy. No, I don't though. like that picture. I don't like that picture. Established really. 1990. He's he good looks looking. like a lesbian. He was born in 1990? Yeah. What year were you born? 89. What year were you born, Naya? I'm not in this. Jesus. <laughs> um, oh, look. That's a super. That's yeah. a tea bag. It looked like he got tea bag oh, in this picture right God. here. Oh, my God. Hey, Austin. I would hope not. You were talking about when you got tea bag before. Well, how old were you? <laughs> That should definitely happen. All right, listen. Why? Um, I mm-hmm. I applaud your bravery. Thanks for talking about something that's very difficult to talk about. Um, I wanted to make sure you had some fun here. I, yeah. I didn't want you to to to, yeah. st- to stay on it that the good. entire time. I didn't want it to be too serious. Yeah, you know, time, you know what I mean, because right? it's a very very personal thing yeah. to it, it, admit. Um, and when it's out there. You probably will get some blowback from his fans and things oh, yeah. like that. I mean, just from what's out there already. It's, it's You've already been getting it? Yeah. Uh, Do you anticipate the call coming from him when this, because this is going up tomorrow. Do you anticipate that call coming from him? Um, my number's getting changed tonight, so. Mm. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not worried about it only because it's not, like, I haven't told any lies. And I feel like I was as respectful as I could be. Like, you know what I mean? I could have said a lot more damaging things. I wasn't on here. Like, he's a piece of shit. Not, like, I don't I don't feel the need to do all of that. Like, right. it's a lot of extraness that I spoke about what everybody already saw. Mm. I think. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Well, listen, we support you here. We love you. We appreciate you coming down and sitting with love us. Love you. I will say this. Give the brothers a chance, man. I know you I feel didn't like say you, I was giving you, up on them. I said, love black you men, said you're all but black I'm men going to expand ago. my options. So if Machine like, Gun Kelly slides in my DMs tomorrow, it's going down. Oh, Machine Period. Gun Kelly. <laughs> Period. All right. Everybody <laughs> clap for the very <laughs> courageous, talented, and beautiful Nia Riley. Give it up for her right here, too. Love you. You know what I'm saying? Oh Bobby God. Brown, before we leave, Bobby Brown. <laughs> you that there nigga, you Bobby. Just look, look at look at look at this. This was the woman, and that's Bobby Brown's wife. Mm-hmm. That's uh, crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, man. Pop Teddy it. Riley. We Teddy Riley was on the podcast. This is an amazing day in my life. Teddy looked young too. And my phone died. Teddy okay. looked mad young. He, he's always looked pretty young. People used to think that like before 
any TV stuff. Like mm-hmm. they thought that was my man. Yeah. Like when we'd be at the mall or out eating, like. No. Don't don't Gross. don't admit that to nobody else, right? Why? Your dad, that's weird. I've we said that weird. before. I know, but he we looks really good. Want, I know, but that's with that's like makes the whole shit weird, and now I feel weird, and now because really you know. just got issues. Yeah, man. I mean maybe. <laughs> so which one of these guys is your uncle? Uh, he had the striped shirt on. Right oh, there. that guy right yeah. there, Markel. Did, why? How come? Look at this. How come they never had another song after this? Um, I think they had one song. I don't, it wasn't as big as this. Oh, look at the all right, we got to go. All right, we out of here.